Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse, a.k.a. BGFH, and I am back for kind of the resurrection of a very old series or playlist that I really haven't done in a long time. And I don't know, I really don't know why. <laughs> but we, I'm going to be resurrecting the AT Demos. I'm actually going to, I think, rename it to make it a little bit more understandable for new users. Uh, it was called AT Demos before, uh, but I think I'm going to change it, uh, the playlist, to Assistive Technology Spotlight, because they may not necessarily be reviews. They may, you know, they may be part demo, part review, part impressions, whatever. But, nevertheless, we're going to cover some assistive technology. Uh, and we're going to start with a couple of devices that I have at home and that I use from time to time that I really rather like. And I was thinking about it because I was actually there's a few devices at work that I'm actually thinking about covering on the channel that I'd really like to uh, demonstrate or talk to you guys more about. But I got to thinking, I have a few things at home. Why the heck haven't I covered them on the channel? So to start this shebang, we are going to look at the Merlin HD CCTV or video magnifier. This is a desktop video magnifier slash CCTV. I'm going to call them a CCTV because that's typically what people in the field or blindness uh, industry, you know, whatever blindness field, whatever low vision people, that's what we have typically called these devices CCTVs in the past. So we're going to go with that. Uh, it is a, and you can get them in different sizes. Now, keep in mind, this is the one that I have here um, is <laughs> sadly like 10 years old or so. I think I got it in 2007, maybe 2008. So at the very least, it's nine, 10 years old. Nice thing is though, it still works great. Uh, it still works when I need it. And when I do need it, it's very, very helpful. So they come in different sizes. Um, I got the 24 inch, uh, seems a pretty, seemed a pretty good size. And in, w there's a couple things I really like about the Merlin specifically. And just remember like the newer ones that are out there, they're going to look even better than the ones that you're seeing. And also remember that, you know, you're looking at this through my iPhone, looking at the screen. So it's going to look even better in person. Uh, you know, you got to forgive my <laughs> basic videography here. So the couple reasons I like this thing <clears throat> is that I've always found the, the Merlins to be really nice as far as image clarity. Um, I've always found the image to be nice and crisp. The other reason that I think a lot of people like them is that they're just really simple, you know. Um, they're easy to use, and a lot of people like that. You turn it on, you, hit, you do a couple of settings, and you're good to go. So... This is your more traditional style CCTV with your XY table, your tray on the bottom, and you have your, in this case, LCD monitor. Thank God we don't have the giant CRT monitors anymore. Yes, I used to have like a 17 inch monstrosity early on in college, and let me tell you, as much as I had to move back in those days, it was not fun. Oh, the thing sucked to move. So it's an LCD monitor. Um, it's a lot easier to move. It's still kind of heavy, but it's 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 a lot easier to move. Um, and you know you have your camera underneath. You know you got your. Let's take a look here. You know you got your camera underneath there. It's got some lighting. Your some lights for your uh, magnification task there. And then you have the screen. And this what I like too is like this one is really nice because I can tilt it. It's going to be hard to see. Or hard to tell. Let me see if I can do this from further back. But see, I can tilt it like up and down. I can turn, I can tilt it some, and I can also like turn it sideways. So like if I have my computer over here and I want to also be able to like look at something on paper and then input it into the computer, if I get a coupon code or I need to record something on the computer, I can turn the monitor to face closer to my computer over here and then I'm good to go. 
Um, so that's really helpful. And the tilting it up is actually really nice because again, let's say you had this next to your kitchen or something and you were looking at uh, recipes or something. I don't want to sit down and then get up all the time if I want to look at the screen. I can simply tilt it up like this, way up. And then as I'm in the kitchen, okay, I, I, what, what does my recipe say? Okay, I could walk over here, just look down comfortably at the screen and then just walk away. So it's really handy uh, for that. I like the flexibility of how you can move the screen around. So the, um, you know, there's some CCTVs that have the camera uh, you don't have an XY table. It's basically the monitor and then you have on top you have like a camera that juts out on an arm above and That's one of the machines I'd like to show uh, from work There's one or two that I really like that do use that style Especially if you're looking for something a little more portable or transportable Hopefully I'll find a way to cover that on the channel here uh, In the near future ish so, uh, like I said, keeping it simple, the Merlin, what I like here, you've got basically four controls. You've got power on and off. You hold it for a second. You wait about three seconds. It turns on. You got your dial here for your magnification. Turn it to the right to make it bigger. Left, smaller. On the left-hand side, you got your button to hit to your mode button that changes your colors. And then on the right hand side underneath you got a slider that controls the brightness. I can brighten that sucker up if I'm in a low lit area or if I really need to see something I can dim it up if it's too bright and there are times depending on what I'm reading uh, where that is really useful to have. So let's take a look at this thing a little bit in more detail. I have a, a document that I got from work, or not from work, from my apartment complex uh, just the other day. And hopefully it's nothing too incriminating. <laughs> but uh, basically, dear resident, uh, so we're just going to look at the beginning of this letter. And here I'm going to turn the knob. This is as small as I can get it. This is a standard, I'll show you the paper itself. This is just a standard 8.5 by 11, probably 10, 12 point font packet of paper. And, you know, if you have just a little bit of low vision, but maybe you want some of the extra color contrasts uh, to help you read, you can get a lot on the screen. So that's as low as you can go. If I dial it in, I'll go as big as it can go. I'll show you that. And, whoa, holy. Uh, let, yeah, wow. Okay, I'm going to back up here. Look at this. is a 24-inch screen. I have a D, an I, N. I think that's probably going to be a T. So I basically got four letters on the screen. <laughs> If you need it that high magnification, I highly would not recommend this. Um, you really might want to think about speech at that point because it's not going to be at all efficient to go, you know, even close to this big. Um, but if you really, really need some fine detail on something super tiny, um, it goes big. So let me back it down a little bit here. There we go. Yeah, that looks like a reasonable reasonable uh, thing here so reasonable size and so that's really it I mean the controls aren't any more complicated than that the only thing you really have is on the front of the tray right now we're in the locked position but you see we got a little uh, switch here flip it to the right and then it kind of shoots back now I can move it forward back left and right um, I got my little uh, network extender over there, so I don't have a whole lot of room on my little stand here. We're going to lock it up again just because that's where I keep it. But, you know, again, you can you, all you have to do is slide the table and the material will go with it. Or you can lock it and slide the material itself. <clears throat> I And especially, you can read under this thing, but I also love to write 
under here. So um, I'll talk about writing a little bit more in a minute, but I want to show you the rest of the features here. So let's go back. Um, dear resident, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we're going to look at this. I've shown you the magnification. Obviously, we, we know what the power button does. I'll hit the mode button. Got your high contrast white or uh, black on white. And this is really good for people who still, like if you like the white background, this can clear up really crappy looking paper. Think about a newspaper and you know how they, even a newspaper, it's like got, got that really, really gray, muddy looking uh, look to it. I mean, that's what your CCTVs will do. You can basically take, you can still keep the white background if you want it that way, but you can also then get rid of that mud and still have a nice high contrast. You can white on black. This is a very popular color mode. I particularly like it myself when I'm not looking at uh, pictures. Very nice for text. Yellow and blue. Some people like this one. I actually kind of don't mind it myself. Kind of reminds me of good old WordPerfect 5.1. Anybody remember that back in the day? Got your uh, yellow background, black text. I'm not, I actually like the darker backgrounds a little better, so, eh, you know. And then you got the invert of that, your black, and then you got kind of a yellowish text there. And again, I can still adjust my brightness slider too, so if I do that, gets a little more washed out looking. Put it kind of in the middle there again. And back to full color. Yay, there's my colored hand. There we go. So, you know, you've got a few color modes, and it, it really, it's not any more complicated than that. Um, if you have uh, seniors or people who are just new to technology or really, you know, just want a basic but really useful tool, that's one of the things I really like about the Merlin is the, they are just really pretty easy to use. Um... Yeah, writing. So like I said, I've shown you kind of reading. Uh, writing. The other thing that I like about CCTVs, desktop CCTVs in particular, is that you can write underneath them. And if you're somebody like me who has to, especially if you're filling out a form or something, you know, to be able to see the, the tiny print and you got to hunch over and try to fill out, you know, these tiny little blocks of forms or whatever. Um, you write it to write under the CCTV. You basically take your hand, you put it under the CCTV, you find the tip of your pen, and then you sit up comfortably and you look at the screen, not the paper. I might be able to demonstrate this. Uh, let me see if I can grab a pen out of my drawer, pull off the cap, twee. All right, so I will just muddy up the uh, my letter here. So I'm gonna find the tip of my pen, and this is interesting because I'm looking through my phone to the screen to look at the paper, so I can put J E S S E. There we go. I didn't lean over. I didn't what I, you know. I didn't have any trouble. And then I take that pen away, and I look at the paper. I'm trying to see where that would be. Uh, let's see. Look at the paper here. Yeah, look at. I mean, it was not the neatest thing, but not too bad. And you can write still pretty small. Once you get some practice, um, it looks big on the CCTV, but you can actually cram a lot of text into a small area like they want you to do on some of those forms. Um, so writing under the CCTV, filling out forms, filling out checks. I have one of these at work as well at my desk, and I love it. Um, they're very, very helpful. So you can write underneath them. Now, one thing when you're looking at a CCTV, be it portable or 
a desktop like this, there's one thing I really want to note for you guys. One of the things I'm a stickler for um, is when I look at some of the false color modes. I'm going to go back to especially the white on black. This is a perfect one to test. One of the things on a CCTV video magnifier that I really am a stickler for is, I don't know really what you would call it, I would call it flickering or ghosting kind of a thing. You notice that when I move my paper back and forth, it looks pretty darn good, you know? Um, I don't know if any there's any blurring effect going through the phone, I'll have to watch this video, but to me it looks actually quite good, even looking through the phone at the TV itself, the monitor itself. <clears throat> and even if I move quickly, you see it kind of starts to flicker a little bit, you can kind of see a little bit of flickering. And most people aren't going to go, you know, you're not going to just move it this fast to read. You see, but you see how it kind of flickers in and out. The problem is, especially when we went from standard definition to high definition uh, cameras, you didn't notice that on the standard definition. But when you went to, you know, everyone bragged about, oh, we have an HD camera, so your images are going to look so good. Well, they do. They look good when they're still but in, they're, they've get, they're getting a lot better now. They're getting a lot better in the last couple few years. But especially for a while, it would really drive me crazy because even at a decent, you know, average reading speed for somebody, you would move the paper and you would just see this just flicker, 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 and it would drive people nuts. Uh, it would drive me nuts. And so... That's one of the, like, we have vendors come to my work, you know, to show us new models or upgrades to, you know, CCTVs and stuff like that. And, the you know, even, like, one of the main vendors that we work with, he kind of laughs at me, but he's like, no, go for it. Um, you know, he knows that the first thing that I'm going to do when I run it through its paces is I'm going to go to yellow on black, white on black. I'm going to go to some of these <coughs> false color modes. And I'm gonna do the panning. I'm gonna I'm gonna move it back and forth. And does it pass my reading test? Is it gonna get all flickery and blurry? Um, the less it does that, the more likely I will be to like and recommend it. And like I said, this one's ten years old. The new ones are actually even a little bit better about it. So uh, I can adjust the brightness. See, it looks a little washed out there. But if even if I go, let's say, all the way dark. I'm probably going to get a little more, well, actually it's not too bad. Actually it's not as bad as I thought it would be. But yeah, see I move it faster and it goes, that just, it, it, you can't read that way, you know. But if I move it at a, you know, reasonable speed, it's actually not terrible. So that is one thing to look out for. Let me brighten this up just in the middle a little bit here. Um, so again, if you're looking, if you are low vision, you're looking at a CCTV, I would recommend doing that sort of a test um, because that's real life. You're, gonna, you're not going to be looking at still things. You're going to be moving the tray and or paper uh, or object underneath it uh, to be able to read. So that is a test I would recommend that you do, uh, even on a portable. Um, I can go to my yellow and blue. I know it's a little bit there. I can kind of tell it's doing it. But for me anyway, it's still not, it still doesn't look too bad. Let's go to the yellow on black. Yeah. It, you know, it's still not too bad. So, yeah. Anyway, that is kind of a look at the Merlin HD CCTV. There's not a whole lot else to say about it. Um, there is an extra kit that I do have buried in some drawer or box somewhere. When I originally got the thing, um, I thought about having using this as my monitor or using it basically where I could switch between like 
I think it's even like a V, you know, it's probably not going to work on modern monitors because it was like a VGA at the time or something like that. And then you could, I think it was you held the mode button and then it would switch between like the CCTV and your computer monitor. It was another kind of mess of cables that you could hook up uh, to do it. Um, I think the new one might still have something like that, but I, but don't quote me on that. Um, I don't really use it anymore just because, I mean, look at this. I've got, you know, my, all my gaming stuff over there. I've got my Rift on the, on the desk there. I don't need another thing to, you know, mess with my monitor. And again, if I'm doing gaming stuff or video, I don't know that the, the refresh rate on this monitor would meet my standards. Um, you know, especially for gaming that kind of a thing. So yeah, I, I treat this as a standalone CCTV, but as a standalone CCTV, it's a good one, you know? And like I said, this one's 10 years old. They have newer models. I think we have a little bit newer model one at work. Um, but if you want something like a more traditional style CCTV, you like the XY table, um, you like the kind of, you know, monitor over the camera design instead of the camera arm above the monitor, um, you want something, especially if you want something simple to use, maybe you have a relative. Uh, I re we would recommend these to seniors a lot too, because again, you turn it on, you hit your power button, you turn the dial, you hit the button to change colors, you turn it off, you move the paper. <laughs> it's not any more complicated than that. So pretty much anyone can figure that out. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's a uh, first video in the assistive technology spotlight revival so hope you guys enjoyed the video um follow me on twitter at bgfh79 and until next time i will talk to you guys again later